Hidden far below the North Shore Mountains is a vital resource, the Seymour Capilano Twin Water Tunnels, which were built in 2015. Today, these tunnels pump up to 500 million liters of water per day to the Seymour Capilano Filtration Plant, where the water is treated and then sent to residents and businesses in the region. A tunnel boring machine powered its way through the rocky earth to create the seven kilometer long tunnels. In 2017, regional water supply capacity expanded with the construction of the Portman Water Supply Tunnel. For this project, commercial divers worked in total darkness, communicating by radio with their team okay. above. Yeah, Roger. Uh, okay, I'm gonna move up. After an hour below sea level, the diver surfaced. He had just four minutes to get into a hyperbaric chamber, which helped to safely dissipate the nitrogen that had built up in his body preventing severe illness. Then it was time for the tunnel boring machine to get to work. Also known as a TBM, this machine digs tunnels through anything from hard rock to sand. The tunnel boring machine cut through the ground and installed a total of 1,000 ring sections. Each ring was made of six concrete segments that don't quite line up. This was on purpose as it created the strongest structure possible. Once the tunnel boring machine finished digging the tunnel, crews installed the steel lining. This project was a massive undertaking, but the new Second Narrows Water Supply Tunnel project is even larger. This is the front piece, or cutter head, of the tunnel boring machine that is tasked with digging the water supply tunnel far beneath Burrard Inlet from North Vancouver to North Burnaby. A project of this size involves big numbers. The front half of the cutter head weighs 237 metric tons. In 2020, it was lowered into a shaft 65 meters deep. And not just any crane could lift and lower the cutter head. The cutter head is the part of the tunnel boring machine that chews through the earth but it's only a small part of the overall machine. The other pieces were also on site and were added on later for a total machine length of 135 meters. At last, the cables were attached to the cutter head and the crane began to lift it towards the shaft. As the cutter head reached the bottom and workers went down to do final adjustments, there was a sense of relief on site. A year later, in summer 2021, the tunnel boring machine is hard at work building this tunnel 65 meters below ground. The tunnel boring machine is operated by this man, Phil Birch. The large machine cuts through the earth and puts up concrete rings that form the tunnel beneath Burrard Inlet. Water pipes will run through this tunnel later on. The new water supply tunnel will be just over a kilometer long and will replace the older existing water pipe. It will be earthquake resilient and will help meet the growing demand for drinking water in the region. Metro Vancouver not only provides clean, safe drinking water to 2.7 million residents, over half of BC's population, Metro Vancouver is also powering homes using a new innovative method involving gas from wastewater. It took not one, but two cranes to install a system to convert wastewater treatment solids into pipeline quality gas, providing an energy source for 400 homes. The work was done here, using surplus biogas from the solids digestion phase of the wastewater treatment. The gas is usually made inert by burning, but Metro Vancouver staff realized it could be better used by piping through a biogas treatment system to create renewable natural gas. The underground pipes, electrical and cement slabs were already done. And on this day, in late 2020, most of the key components are being installed. Next were the three processing vessels. The digester gas will pass through the three vessels before entering the Fortis natural gas system. Vessel one, using two cranes, was carefully brought upright 
and then one crane maneuvered it across the job site. Vessel two, up, over, and down. Neat as a pin. And the third vessel, about 15 meters tall and about 5,000 pounds, I'm gonna bring it to me. was positioned precisely in place, then bolted down. The day went off without a hitch. Then it was time to install the gas collection dome. The crew put the green membrane in position. Then they added an outer covering. It will trap an extra buffer layer of air with the biogas being piped in under the green membrane. The test inflation using just air got underway. It proved to be successful. The next step was to power up the system. Recently, domes at another Metro Vancouver wastewater treatment plant underwent a dramatic and highly technical makeover. These domes are a familiar sight to those who use the Alex Fraser Bridge. They're called trickling filters, and they're a vital part of the Anasas Island wastewater treatment plant. In spring 2020, one of the domes was removed for the first time since the trickling filters were built 25 years ago. This was done so that equipment inside the trickling filter could be replaced. Removing the dome was no small feat, as its diameter is similar to an Olympic-sized swimming pool and its weight is comparable to about 30 full-size vehicles. Once the dome was removed, new equipment was installed. The blocks, made of PVC plastic, get stacked up like bricks inside the filter. They will help with filtering wastewater during secondary treatment. It takes several months to complete the refurbishment and the work can only be done when sewer pipes contain little rainwater, making summer the perfect time for this project. This highly technical makeover will extend the life of these trickling filters for another 25 years. Building new facilities is another way that Metro Vancouver meets the needs of the region's growing population. It took 500 concrete trucks and 24 hours to reach this important milestone at the new United Boulevard Recycling and Waste Centre in Coquitlam. 5,000 cubic metres of concrete was poured for the main floor of the transfer station. From there, the exciting work of raising the building began. A landmark moment involved this steel superstructure. Workers carefully coordinated four cranes and six aerial platforms to lift and place the beams, which span more than 73 meters. United Boulevard Recycling and Waste Center is replacing an old facility located nearby. It will serve about 200,000 customers. Metro Vancouver continually looks for ways to maintain and strengthen the vital services we all need, including wastewater treatment, clean drinking water, and solid waste management. In fact, Metro Vancouver is investing more than $6 billion into critical infrastructure over the next five years, making our region stronger and more resilient today and tomorrow.